Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. Back in April I was approached by Megan who runs Peggy of Williamsburg to see if I would like to work in collaboration with them to produce a version of the famous barbecue dress from Gone with the Wind using the fabric that they sell and also their pattern, uh, this one here. Um, and of course I absolutely jumped at the chance. It was a dress that I've always wanted to do. If you've been following me for any amount of time here on YouTube you will know for how much I love the work of Walter Plunkett and Gone with the Wind having made several dresses from the film before this. So I was really excited to take this project on and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with all of you. I'd like to thank my patrons and anyone who sent a super thanks for supporting me with this project. It means a lot. And also a big, big thank you to Megan for trusting me with this project. It means a lot and it's a dream come true for me. If you're interested in seeing what products Peggy of Williamsburg do, they have the fabric and several Gone with the Wind patterns and several other um, colonial patterns, I will link to their Etsy shop in the description below. So let's get on to starting this and I'll see you at the end. So looking through this pattern, I've come across a couple of things. I can't find anywhere on this pattern that tells you what the seam allowance is. And also for the skirt, obviously because that's what I'm going to be working on first, it doesn't tell you anywhere on the pattern if you cut the skirt panels singularly or on the fold of the fabric. So I'm gonna have a chat with Megan and try and work this out and then carry on with the project. Because the skirt pattern for all three layers are printed onto the same piece of paper, I'm gonna to have to trace it off onto another piece of paper and do this with each of the layers. So I'm gonna use my tracing wheel and I'm gonna trace the skirt pattern onto the brown paper and then draw the line on. I'm still debating whether to increase the 5 8 seam allowance to an inch because for me 5 8 is a bit of an odd measurement to work with as a costume maker. We normally use inch seam allowances so that might be something I'll add on once I've traced it off. I start cutting out the base layer of the skirt in cream silk. Each layer of the skirt is made up of nine panels. This layer has two gussets which are sewn on either side of the back panels. They only appear on this layer. I decided to go with the one inch seam allowance on this and the organza layer. Once all the panels are sewn together, I pleat the waist of the skirt in single knife pleats. The pattern comes with a pleating guide for all layers. I then level the hem and hand sew the hem up.
I then follow the same process of cutting and sewing for the next two layers. Both the organza and the top layer are pleated in double knife pleats. Now that I have the second layer on, I can understand why this is a design look that Plunkett returned to again and again. Having the organza layer on the top, it adds bulk, makes the skirt bigger, but it also gives the dress a lightness and it's something that he returned to in films like Raintree County and Madame Bovary. And now it's on to cutting out the fabric from Peggy of Williamsburg. For the top layer, I decided to use the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Finally, I sew all the layers to the waistband and cover with a piece of cream silk. And that's the finished skirt. I'm really, really happy with how she's turned out. Um, I can't believe how well she's turned out actually. And it's been a really good learning experience. We're seeing how all this goes together and how the layers work together. Um, I'd like to thank my patrons and everyone who has sent a super thanks here on YouTube for making this project possible and once again I can't thank Megan at Peggy of Williamsburg for sending me this fabric and making this project a reality. Please join me for part two where we will be tackling making the bodice and the belt.